Hi, my name is Jack from Painted Legion, and today I'm going to show you how to paint my favourite of the three new schemes that Games Workshop released with 10th edition, and that's High Fleet Low Tan. When I first saw this scheme, it really jumped out to me. The colour was amazing, but red is red can be tough to get right, and, and so is the pattern that they use on the chitin. Uh, but with the magic of contrast paints, I've managed to make a really easy to follow tutorial that gets you pretty close to the heavy metal scheme that will give you a really great model at the end. So first we're going to use Vallejo Ivory and we're going to do a heavy dry brush over a black prime model. It's very easy for red to look uh, flat. So by doing this dry brush over a, over a black, we're going to give our contrast uh, mediums a lot to work with in terms of picking out that colour, but also keeping the shadows distinct. So once you finish that, I'm going to pick up our Flesh Terror's Red, my favourite of the contrast paints. It's such a brilliant red. It's got a lot more brown in it than like Mephiston Red or Blood Angel's Red does, so it's got that sort of deep blood colour. And we're just going to put this all over the flesh of the model. Make sure you get it everywhere, especially on the inside of the arms that are holding the gun at the terminus. It's very easy to, to miss that, and you'll be able to you'll notice it um, on the tabletop if you're not careful. I'm going to grab corn red, and we're going to stick to that crimson color that Lotan has. I'm going to dry brush this corn red over the, the main details of the model. Don't go too heavy that we lose some of that depth from the red. I think I went a little heavy with mine. Just pick out the main parts of the flesh, and then we'll move on to using Wazdaka Red, sticking to that crimson, and this time a lighter dry brush, just to pick out the details. Okay, next we're going to grab Contrast Black Legion. Any black will do. I use Black Legion because it's just got brilliant coverage and easy to use. And we're going to black out all of the details, so the chitin panels on the gun and on the termagant, and also the hoofs, the talons, any horns, whatever. Uh, and then also the eyes and the teeth. And continuing on with the chitin, we're going to pick up our Corvus Black base paint. I'm going to paint this onto all of the bone type stuff. So the chitin, the, the hoofs, and the talons. We're not going to put this onto the chitin on the gun. We're going to do that a slightly different color. So leave that just black for now. But get a nice solid coat of this onto, especially onto the chitin. Next, we're going to grab corn red and contrast medium, and we're going to make this into a, a, a very light wash. And we're going to use this to stain those armor panels to get that red transition from the gray to the red that you get on the chitin panels for low tan. You can see the consistency there. It's about two to like a, a small, I take a small dab of it on the end of my brush, put that onto the palette, and then I do two drops of, of uh, contrast medium. So they're really, it's not very thick at all. It's very thin. And we're gonna just paint that onto the, the armor panels. We're using a sort of stippling motion. We want that color to be in the center of the panel and moving in towards where the shadows would be. So we've got the gray working outwards towards the edge of the armor panel and the corn red sat in the middle of it. And to do that, we're going to paint into the recesses and the, the contrast paint being contrast paint will, will collect there naturally. And then when we, when we take our brush off the model, we're going to take the brush off where we want the paint. So in the middle of the panel, we're going to take, move, remove our brush and that's where um, color is going to collect. So that's how we're going to get that staining on the key areas of the of the uh, armor panels. This will take about two or three coats and just keep going until you're happy with the effect. Don't go too heavy on this, otherwise it won't look quite right. Just make sure it's at least, uh, at least visible, I guess. And make sure also that it's 100% dry before you go in with the next layer. Okay, after that we're going to get Black Semplar. Another black contrast paint. Slightly, it's got worse coverage than Black Legion, but that's why we're using it here, because we're just using it as a shade. And make sure you don't have too much on your brush, because we don't want to uh, cover up the work that we've done with the, the corn red wash there onto the armor panels. And we're just going to paint this into the shadowed areas 
of the armor panels to give it some depth and definition and let the other colors on there really pop. So into the, uh, the crevices from where the chitin overlap and also any smaller divots or scratches that you get along the spines or along the edge of the armor panels. Now we're going to highlight the armor, the hooves and the talons using Demonet Hide. If you've ever watched any of my Tyranid videos, I bang on about this technique, but it's so, so important. You're going to do this feathering motion, and to do that, you're going to hold your brush somewhere between perpendicular and 45 degrees to the, uh, to the model itself. And you're going to do a quick feathering motion along the edge of the armor panel. And the key to this uh, partially as practice, but also paint consistency. I'm using neat Demonet Hide here. Now my Demonet Hide is quite a new bottle. Um, so either I'd suggest getting a new bottle, so it makes it easier on you, uh, or you, you could muck around with diet looting it, but it, it, it's a lot of faff and, and can be frustrating. So I recommend getting a new bottle and having a go at this if you're gonna do an army of this. And we're not, we've not got too much paint on our brush. I, if I feel like I've got too much paint so that I, that I can't make a thin line, I, I'll wipe some of it off on, on the nail of my thumb. You could also wipe it off onto, the, onto a paper towel if you wanted to. It's up to you. And whilst I'm doing this, I just want to ask that if you're getting value from my tutorials, please like and subscribe. Of course, it helps the channel a lot and keeps me voted me keeps me motivated to make these videos. I, I really like making these videos and I love it when people uh, get something out of it. Also, I do commission painting. So if you'd like me to paint a model for you or an army for you, uh, go have a look at my Instagram at the kind of the other stuff I do. I don't just do Tyranids uh, and drop me a message if you're interested. Next, to really make it pop, we're going to use Administratum Grey. And we're not using the same feathering technique. We're using a, it's a similar technique, but it's, it's, it's got a, an important difference to it. We're sort of just dabbing the paint on to the edge of the panels. This isn't edge highlighting. It's more like weathering or battle damage or chipping. We're not doing a full line highlight of the edge of the panel. We're just picking out, we're putting maybe two or three dots along the edge, on the, along the smaller edges like we are on the head there, but just enough to give that feel of worn, chipped armor, organic bone type growth, that, you know, that kind of thing. And again, I'm using paint that's, you can see I, I used too much paint. I had too much paint on my brush there. I'm using paint that is uh, neat from the pot and I don't have too much on my brush. It's just enough that, so when I touch my brush onto the edge of the model, I'll, I'll see a nice dot there that's not too big. So make sure you have a, a brush with a good tip and some accurate placement with your brush. Okay, that's the armor panels done. We're gonna grab Bugman's Glow. And my model has gone back in time here. I did this in a, a different order, but for the sakes of continuity of the tutorial, I'm gonna show you this step here. Not in the order I did it. We're gonna paint in Bugman's Glow onto the, the gun and also the vents in the arms and the legs. So get a nice cover in that. And try not to, or try to be careful when you're painting in the, the vents. You don't want to get this onto the skin, but if you do, just go in with corn red and neaten it back up. Then to give some definition to those fleshy bits, we're going to grab our Volupus pink and we're going to thin it down with some contrast medium and we're going to wash it over all of those fleshy bits. So anything we painted in Bugman's Glow, we're going to tint it a bit more pink and also get some of that deeper pink into the crevices, into the detail parts of the model. Just adds a bit of, bit of definition and pulls the color a bit closer to what we've got going on with the skin as well. And to finish that off, we're going to grab Brown Rose by Vallejo. We're going to highlight those fleshy areas on the points of the model where we think that the most light would hit. So making sure some of that Bugman's Glow and Volupus Pink is still showing through, but that we've got those three colors clearly on there. Then pick up Nagroth Knight and the paint in the tongue. I'm just adding a bit of uh, a bit more color on here. It's purple. We used a lot of purple <laughs> for this model on the carapace. So we're adding a bit more in there. Uh, and then we're going to highlight that with 
serous purple. Just light dabs along the edge of the tongue. Okay, with those fleshy bits done, we're going to do the chitin panels on the gun, starting with Gorthor Brown. We're doing just a feathering motion in the same way that we did with the, uh, the chitin panels for the termagant itself. Feathering motion along the edge of the panels on the gun. And then we'll highlight that with Bane Blade Brown. Just like we did with the Administratum Grey, this isn't an edge highlight. This isn't the same feathering motion. We're just picking out parts of the edge of that armor. Okay, we're getting towards the end, doing some of the, the eyes now, the eye details. So we're gonna paint in Stegodon Scale Green onto the eyes on the termagant and the gun. I'm gonna highlight that with Sotek Green and on the gun, I'm just doing a, a line down the center. So the, either side of the center of the eye, kind of like a cat's eye, either side of the center of the eye is black. And then the middle of the pupil is what we're doing with uh, these greeny blues. Just to copy the artwork that uh, the heavy metal put out. And then finally, we're going to highlight that again with Temple Guard Blue. Just a, a dot in the center of the eye of the gun and the corner of the eye for the Temple Gun itself. And then the final detail. I'm going to paint the teeth, Zandri Dust, on each of the teeth, making there's a nice, making sure there's a black showing between each of the teeth still. And finally, we're going to highlight that with Screaming Skull, just on the edge of the end, ends of the teeth, and then we're done. There you go, there's High Fleet Lotan. Really, really love this scheme. This isn't, this is the army painting version of the scheme that I came up with. I, I've actually done another scheme that I'm considering using for my main army. It's a bit more involved. Um, so let me know if you'd be interested in seeing that video. It, it, it will take a bit more work to do, but the, the end result is a lot closer to the Games Workshop scheme, which I think is stunning. It's such a brilliant scheme. I absolutely love it. So yeah, let me know if you'd be interested in that. Uh, like and subscribe if you enjoyed this. If you're interested in me painting a model for you or painting an army, uh, drop me a message on Instagram. Uh, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.